and welcome to Once More With Feeling track by track review of Hardwired to Self Destruct. As we said we would actually go track by track through this new album because we really need to show we actually we're not always we don't hate Metallica we just hate one particular album of theirs and have misgivings about a couple of others but none the more for that. So yeah first track on the album Hardwired. Now when I first listened through this I was not particularly impressed it actually gave me significant worry for how the rest of the album might turn out if this was their best foot forward this was the single that they were releasing first um, they actually released it on the same day as they announced uh, let me just check yeah yeah they actually released the track on the same day that they announced when the album would be released okay Yes, that makes sense. Kind of build a hype. Mm. But the album's coming out here. Check out this track we made. Mm. In fact, if you pre-ordered the album, you'd get a free download of the track. It's pretty common, I think, these days. Mm. Now, as I say, when I first listened through it, I was I was very met. In fact, my Facebook status on that day was opinion of new Metallica track, meh. <laughs> but repeated listen-throughs benefited it. Um, it feels, it kind of feels a bit uh, load reload era in terms of you know complexity. It, it's not that complex a track, but it's an it's an okay one. You know, it's enjoyable enough. I I would go back to it probably. And I I earlier said that it was in the four star rating. I'd probably more give it a three three and a half. It's gonna get a it's solid, but it's kind of just there. Yeah. I think one of the things that detracts from it is the fact that Kirk only gets a very simplistic solo, which, mm. when we're talking about Metallica and Kirk's solos, him having a simplistic one... It's quite impressive, like, an opening to it, though. Yeah. I like the opening. It just kind of makes you think, yep, this is metal. This is Metallica. Yeah. But the opening kind of makes you think of Little Bit Kill Em All. Yeah. Then he kind of just doesn't sound as good from then on. Yeah, I mean, it's an okay, okay opening track, but it, it's definitely a case of it probably should have been more of a middling track, you know, just as a bit of a breather track. A middling is a pretty good way of describing it. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, too easy. Uh... Anyway, next we've got uh, Atlas Rise, which now this was the song that actually gave me hope for the album turning out good. Uh, it was kind of a case of when they were releasing the singles, this was the third one they released, and this was where I got into the, okay, as a fan, as someone who's wanted a really good Metallica album for years, this gives me hope. This gives me positive expectation. Mm, this was the first track on the album that made you think, this sounds a little bit like Iron Maiden in places. I can hear that. So we're going to do guitar work in the chorus. Mm. I'd say that's more more prevalent in later tracks than here. Yeah, there are a couple of ones that, that do it does show up in as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, you, it just... Um, it's very difficult to to cover this one because I've already done a review of it so it's sort of like how do I re-review something <laughs> well has your opinion changed I guess you can if you haven't then well yeah <laughs> yeah um, yeah my opinion hasn't changed so if you want to hear my more exacting opinion of it watch the video review of it which also covers hardwired and moth into flame I'm never going to get that title right <laughs> um, but yeah, Pierce, you might as well give your opinions of Atlas Rise. I actually really quite like this song. Mm -hmm. I mean, after Hardwired, I agree that Hardwired kind of wasn't the best place to start. But this is definitely an improvement. You know, that kind of I made in the kind of sign on the guitar in the chorus. It's all going to start to me, possibly because I'm an Iron Maiden fan. I also say it's interesting. It's also you know a lot longer than Hardwired is. Yeah. But it, it works with it quite well. Yeah, it's a pretty solid song. So what kind of rating I give it? Probably a good 3.5. This is probably one of the first songs that we think, yeah, this is actually a decent album. No other songs later on I prefer to it, mm. but this is certainly above middle. 
I would give it a four. Um, That's uh, Next, we've got Now That We're Dead. Now, this is an interesting... This doesn't happen often that we are on complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. I mean, that only really happens in cases like when we've done J-pop albums or post-metal albums. And even then, with the post-metal ones, that's more of a, it's just not my bag. It's yeah. not like a bag we've actually been on opposite ends in terms of whether we think it's a good song or not. In this case, it's kind of just... It started out with that kind of opening riff like where you're like... It kind of just then meanders a bit too much, I'm like, okay. Hmm. I mean, for me, I... I think this is one of those cases where it benefits from strong lyricism for me because it it's the whole concept of um um oh let me just look up the lyrics yeah now that we're dead my dear we can be together now that we're dead my dear we can live we can live forever i mean i know i just said strong lyricism and it repeats itself <laughs> but <laughs> none the more for that um it's the whole concept of yearning for something and as a consequence of death finally attaining it I what the, the kind of chorus part reminds me of as well I just think of something else I can't quite place it well it's got slight Nick Cavey feel to it mm, can't really say it personally uh, I, I, I'm not talking actual musicianship I just mean concept no, I guess I can understand that mm. it just didn't really stick with me very much Fair enough. I I just I really like it. I think grabbed by a combination of lyrics and I did really like the music. I thought it had strong riffs and it felt like it was building to something for me. Yeah, just mm, it because I got like a kind of driving build to it. It just doesn't seem to ever go anywhere with it. It's just it's just kind of I guess it's kind of a little bit of wasted potential. Could have done more with it. Fair dues. It's not a bad song, it's just, it's just one of the weaker ones in the album, I think. Whereas it's one of my favourites on the album. Uh, next, uh, Moth Into Flame. I keep having to stop myself before saying <laughs> THE, because it doesn't... I love the song. <laughs> I, I love the song, but there should be a THE into between Into and Flame. Syntax Metallica. Syntax. That was terrible. Syntax sounds way too close to Saint Anger, which is boring. Yeah, no. We don't want to go down that rabbit hole again. <laughs> rabbit hole, like a giant pit straight to hell. It's kind of ironic when you consider their song for South Park. Yeah, this is true. Um, but yeah. Moth Into Flame. Um... That's a really intriguing one. I actually, well, I like the song. <laughs> it kind of has the same kind of driving force that Now That With Dead has, but it seems a bit more interesting. Mm-hmm. We're going to change pace during the kind of choral part. It's also really nice. We have the lead guitar part there as well. So, yeah. mm-hmm. It kind of has a kind of... It's got a kind of strong thrash metal force behind it. It's also kind of a more melodic side to it as well, which is a good combination. I said the chorus does not... Well, not going to... Um, what kind of side strike what it is. Hmm. That one part. The, <laughs> support the, the moth into the flame part. This sounds very unlike Metallica. But in this case, it kind of benefits from it, I think. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to note because in an interview for the band's official fan magazine, So What, prior to the release of Hardwired to Self Destruct, James Hetfield discussed the lyrical themes covered on the track. Moth into flame is pretty literal. These days, everyone has an obsession with being famous, being popular, whether it's your Facebook account or walking around the street, watching someone doing selfies of themselves as they're walking down the street. Like, what? What are you doing? (laughs) Well, he's got a point. Yeah. I mean, perjurer, fame is the murderer, seduce you into ruin. I think it'd be more interesting is the fact that the friggin' song even sings Moth Into The Flame. So why is it not in the title? Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those... I think that's why my brain is going... Well, hang on! <laughs> it's sort of like... But they say moth into the flame! So why... What the fuck? Oh damn it, Hetfield. <laughs> well, Hetfield and Lars. Yeah, it's 
probably why. Um, <laughs> let's say about that the better. But yeah, again, this um, it was basically Moth into Flame and um, Atlas Rise. Those two songs were a okay. We might actually get a good Metallica album here. Also, the song actually has a full-on solo in it, which is pretty good. Mm. Well, there's... In fact, I'm pretty sure every song does have mo- have solos in it. I mean, Hardwired is the only one that only has one solo. Hmm. But it's like this actually has a proper, like, full instrumental part in the middle with a full-on wiggly wiggly guitar solo, and it's like... Yeah. This, mm. this, is, this, is, this is, you know, more common. Because some of the other two seem to kind of look at as being a bit of flat. Well, there's also quite a few of them that have been pretty damn great. Yeah. Well, I mean, the one thing that is a bit frustrating for me is that I would like to hear a bit more bass virtuosity on Metallica albums because Robert Trujillo is amazing on the bass. So I would like to see a bit more of him being able to showcase his techniques. Mm. Um, well, that's probably would say that Moth Into Flame is actually my favourite song on the first disc. Mm-hmm. Next, we have Dream No More, which is Metallica once more approaching Lovecraft. <laughs> which is a song that we've only done a few times in the past. Yeah. <laughs> you can count on one hand the songs that, well... If there are other songs that discuss Cthulhu stuff, mention in the comments. I'd like to know because as far as I know, there are only four songs, which are obviously Call of Cthulhu, The Thing That Should Not Be, All Nightmare Long, which is actually referencing a more obscure Lovecraft thing. Um, If anyone knows about The Hounds of Tindalos, they'll get what I'm saying. If you don't know about it, T-I-N-D-A-L-O-S and things will make sense Um, and now this one Dream No More Uh, yeah it's a very blatant I mean the chorus goes you turn to stone can't look away you turn to stone madness they say Cthulhu awaken (laughs) it's pretty all I know about it for some reason, the one thing that comes to mind initially when hearing this song is Black Sabbath. Yeah, I can hear that. It's a very heavy kind of chugging riff. Which at the opening just makes you think that a lot. Which is in no way a bad thing. Yeah. i definitely say that it does call a lot on um, structure from the thing that should not be. Hmm. I can say that. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Whilst it is very obvious, unlike well, I say that unlike the other songs, but the thing that should not be is very obvious in what it's referring to, seeing as it takes direct quotes from Lovecraft. I mean, the whole in Stranger Eons, even Death May Die, that is a direct quote. I probably will know one of that. Mm. But yeah, it's, it's like the opening... At first I wasn't... I, I, I was just sort of like... Mm. This is a pretty cool song. And then he said Cthulhu Awaken and I was sort of like, wait, what? <laughs> and then I, after that point, I started paying attention. I mean, he sways in abyss, returning, inhaling black skies. He shakes with a torture burning, all lost in his eyes. Sanity taken, seething damnation. Uh, the opening lines, he sleeps under black sleep. He, but ah, he sleeps under black seas, waiting, lies dreaming in death. He sleeps under cosmos shaking, stars granting his breath. Oh, it's sort of like if you know about Cthulhu mythology, you'll go, wait, hang on. <laughs> Continue. He wakes as the world dies screaming, all horrors arrive. He wakes giving earth its bleeding, pure madness alive. <laughs> Yep, that's some Lovecraftian shit right there. Well, it's specifically Cthulhu. His whole shtick is causing madness and eating the uh, souls of the mad. Oh, no, no, no. Um, and, as I say, structurally, it feels like a continuation of the thing that should not be. It's 
got this swelling, chugging feel. And when it finally reaches its apex, it actually feels like it's exploding. It's only one of the better songs on the album, I'd say. Mm. It's one of the most interesting ones, so it's quite a bit different. Yeah. Uh, I am admittedly going quite quickly through these songs, but it's because I don't want this to be an hour-long review. Uh, next we've got Halo on Fire. Initially I wasn't that impressed by this song, but it was another one that benefited from repeated listens. Yeah. It's one of the ones that stood out to me early on. I think it's probably going to stay up there for me. Mm. Well, and I can't actually <laughs> think of much to say about it. It just kind of goes against that hour of it being one that stood out to me. But I... I mean, it kind of feels a bit like it's going back to themes like um, Harvester of Sorrow and Until It Sleeps and the various songs that are discussing emotional issues um, I mean those were more regarding Hetfield's issues regarding um, you know the fact that his parents were Christian scientists and as a consequence, they ended up dying of cancer because they wouldn't, they wouldn't seek treatment. Yeah, that's always a problem. This is another one of those songs that kind of does build up over time. I think mm. it's a very, very you know, slow and somber. And that freaking outro is fantastic. Mm. Thematically, it kind of feels a bit, a bit like um, uh, sad but true. Yeah, I can see that. It does sound kind of black owl mesh. Mm. Thankfully, not another Unforgiven. <laughs> <laughs> I I would like to know why Unforgiven got three, uh, got two sequels, iterations. huh? It's like, what do you need three iterations? I mean, maybe maybe there isn't any Unforgiven for. Maybe we're gonna reboot the franchise with just the Unforgiven again. <laughs> like, oh, we're telling between the album. Oh, it's a track called the Unforgiven. I realize it's got like, like a shiny new logo and new and new musicians, but it's pretty much the same story. But all badly. <laughs> like, who's reboots? Just, they did not have a particularly good one. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's one of the slower songs on the album, and I think it placement and themes, tone, musicianship, everything like that benefits from where it's positioned. Well, it's only the first disc, so... Yeah. It's a good place for it. Mm. I mean, I, I... I just really love the... Hmm? I really love kind of where the whole thing just swells over time. Yeah. Whereas the whole... We like songs to build up and stuff. It's, this is... Metallica managing to do that quite nicely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it must have been Halo on Fire that made me worried that they'd do another Unforgiven because of the whole... It's slowing things down a bit and it's sort of like... I'm worried! That might... I'm pretty sure that was probably why it didn't initially impress me that much because I was I was already fearful for how it could turn out. It does kind of change pace a lot in the in the middle point. Mm. There are shifts in style there. I think it makes me think quite a bit of one in that kind of structure. Because the first part of one is very quiet and somber and slow, and then it just goes into overdrive in the end. Mm. I love that song. It's a really good song. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing that song live back when I did Death on the Tour. I was like, yeah, that was fucking awesome. Ah, uh, a bit there. Next song, Confusion. Now this is where it definitely has a feel of a feel of things like Harvester of Sorrow. Um, okay. This is the one song that made, just made me think. This sounds kind of like Doom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably because, you know, the Doom's music was taken like as a modified version of Metallica's music in the first place, but... Well, if what someone says here is accurate, you could argue it's a continuation of the themes of One. Oh, yeah. Um, they, the person here is saying that it explores the concept of PTSD. The narrator is a soldier who suffers from it and describes how it affects their life preventing them from living normally in a constant struggle with insanity. Ah, uh, this is the one. It was con it was confusion that uh, reminded me of Am I Evil. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, in terms of theme, I can see where the person is coming from. Uh, the yeah, opening lyrics. The, the opening lyrics do make me think a little bit of the sort of thing they are talking about in one. Yeah. I mean, wake to face the day, grab this life and walk away. War is never done. Rub the patch and battle on. Make it go away. Please make it go away. Uh, confusion or sanity is now beyond me. Delusion or sanity is but a memory. My life, the war that never ends. Yep, that's war. So, yeah, I can see where this person is coming from. Um, obviously, can't really say for definite whether that's an accurate description because it's an unreviewed comment and there's not anything about it on the wiki page. Um, see if there's anything... Apparently Confusion has a music video as well, so... I thought I could tell all of the songs do. Hmm. Didn't they released them after the album came out, they released the rest of the, sing the uh, music videos. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's not a bad song. Yeah. I can definitely see the kind of thematic similarities to one. Musically, not so much. Well, I can only... I think it's one of those... It's got aspects that you can connect with other songs, but it is its own... It does have its own identity. Even if it is confused about it. Hmm. Uh, that was bad. But yeah, apparently the video is a war-based one, so that uh, reinforces that theory. Yeah. Um, next, we've got Man Unkind, which, interestingly enough, is the only song on the album that isn't just Hetfield and Ulrich. It's also uh, written by Robert Trujillo. Funny that, that that I say about it needing more bass showcasing and <laughs> then this is it. Yeah, a man unkind. I really enjoy. I like it, but that total bugs me for some reason. I I think it's it's one of those Metallica just really really. <laughs> I I think it's the capitalized U N. It's like my own kind. Yeah, it's sort of like, you really didn't need to do that. We already got the joke. You didn't need... <laughs> That's the joke. <laughs> you didn't need to enlarge the letters to make us spot it. It's kind of... You do realise listening to music is how we learn what the joke is. Yeah, it just kind of bugs me a bit. So it's something some kid like in high school would come up with. It's like, <laughs> Man, unkind. <laughs> yeah, the sort of thing that, let's say, a 14-year-old me would have come up with. <laughs> Actually, no, that's bad for even a 14-year-old me. At 14, I was Captain Edgelord. I mean, I came up with a character who wanted to wipe out humanity, even though he was a human. A good bit of misanthropy. Um... That's the actual song itself, though. Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm. Apparently, the music video for the song is a tribute to Mayhem. Okay, then. Um, paying tribute to former members Per Dead Olin and... I don't know how to pronounce that Eronymous Arthur. Oh, Eronymous. Yeah. Eronymous is the most well-known one of the group. Aside from Varg. Well, yeah. For the same reasons, generally. Uh, yeah. Just to briefly tangent, because I've noticed this with Man Unkind, um, there's a few themes running through this album. Sanity is one of them. Biblical humans are another. Okay. Well, think about it. This says about Adam's return, the Garden of Eden. Uh, yeah. Hmm? It's interesting that something like Halo and Fire is probably kind of reference to that kind of thing as well. This one to me also sounds... Quite a bit like some of the earlier stuff they've done as well. It's a kind of early Metallica feel to me. Yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking. Uh, now, this is one of the songs that I was saying felt heavily influenced by Iron Maiden. You know, the opening riff feels very Iron Maiden-y. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah. And it definitely sh You can definitely get a feel for the bass line, which... I like bass. I like having a bit of a... That's what I need 
from a lot of metal is that sort of bass sound. It's just like it's kind of overlooked a bit in metal as well. Yeah, which is weird. But yeah, it's, I mean, this is why it's sort of like, ah, appropriate that Robert Trujillo was one of the writers behind this one. Mm. It's actually quite weird to note that Kirk Hammett didn't write any of these songs. It's not in any of the yeah. writing credits. It's a bit strange. Hmm? Well, you just start, actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, when he lost his phone with, like, hundreds of riff ideas, they probably went, you know what, Kirk, we'll do this. You can't be trusted. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. You lost... You didn't even think to back up. All of those ideas. You fool of a took. Um, but, yeah. I really like the song, but I will agree that aspects of it bug me and the whole man unkind it's sort of like oh that's so cheesy <laughs> more cheesy than wallace's cellar <laughs> better uh, but yeah still a great song it's just it would have been one of those could could you have tweaked that slightly you know make it sound a bit less cheesy I mean, I, I know metal yeah. is cheesy as fuck anyway, but we don't need to That's over an extra egg level it. Of cheese. Huh? There's an extra level of cheese. Yeah. I mean, you're borderlining on um, Avantasia's level of cheese. When you're bordering that. Yeah, then do you know you're in high end cheese levels? Yeah. And this is coming from a fan of Avantasia. Don't get me wrong, Avantasia is awesome. But their songs are cheesy as all hell. As part of what they're, they are. As part of their charm, in fact. Well, everyone loves cheese. Cheese is amazing. Whether it's an edible or musical form. But anyway, next song, Here Comes Revenge. Which is my favourite song on the album. I would be inclined to agree it's one of the best. Hmm. I... It's probably between this and uh, Moth Into Flame for me. Hmm. You're doing it now. Moth into the flame? <laughs> flame into the moth? The into the the? Who knows? Yeah. I mean, it, it's a very straightforward one. It's, um, as I was saying about uh, biblical characters, um, it's a, uh, one of the verses is, I've been here since dawn of time. Countless hatreds built my shrine. I was born in anger's flame. He was Abel, I was Cain. I am here, I'm hell unbound. Burn your kingdom to the ground. Yep, that's pretty goddamn biblical. <laughs> I mean, the chorus goes, Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, a life for a life, it's my burden of proof. <laughs> really not being subtle about this, are they? I think after Man Unkind, they just went, you know what, fuck it with subtlety. Pretty much. In this, no, this, in this case, it's not subtle, but it works. Yeah. Well, they're like, <laughs> man, I'm kind, what a joke. It's all about the people, the shit, yeah? Whereas this is much more of a, um, it's kind of the song that's good to listen to if you're having a bad day. It's in the end, it's like, oh god, everything's ours. Here comes your friend! <laughs> yeah, this is a good song. Yeah. I like it. I would say it's the best on the album. Uh, other people would say uh, one of the later tracks, but this is my opinion. This isn't stated fact. You've got loud opinions, have they? Um, but yeah, it's a bit more simple, but it's one that benefits from being a bit more simple. You know, subtlety is not needed in this situation. When you've got a song that's themed about, around revenge. <laughs> It's subtle being sneaky, right? <laughs> Subtlety kind of goes out the window. Especially especially if it's Repo the Genetic Opera. <laughs> Very much so. Um, if you don't know that film, you need to find it and watch it. I mean, come on, it's got Giles singing opera. If you don't know who Giles is, then you also need to watch that. <laughs> okay, it's got Anthony Head singing opera and repossessing organs. What's not to love? It's also got the girl from Spy Kids. 
and um, Sarah Brightman. So, you know you're in good hands with a musical. Yes, the girl from Spy Kids is actually a professional singer. I went on a weird tangent. Please bring me back, Pierce. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, um, are you savage? I don't know if I'm savage. Can you answer? <laughs> Who knows? I'm hoping we chat like I can, because that's what they're asking in the next one. Yeah. Um, am I savage? That feels like it could be thematically linked with Of Wolf and Man. Yeah, I can hear the, the title link there at least. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and also lyrically, I mean, Am I Savage, Howling at the Door. Uh... Well, that's one of the first comments in the song, it's just, this song has no chill. <laughs> <laughs> Am I Savage, Scratching at the Door. Am I Savage, I Don't Recognise You Anymore. There's got to be a thematic link with A Wolf and Man. Tooth is fang, twisting under skin. Foul tongue, black breath. Change, snap inside, the beast about complete. Change, soon infects the rest. Yeah, that sounds pretty similar. And, well, the final capstone. Faithful as the full moon is rising. Some does remind me quite a bit. I mean, a wolf of man is all about turning into a werewolf and connecting with the inner nature of your inner nature reconnecting with your core self or that sort of thing so I can't really see how this can be anything other than at the very least thematically linked with a wolf and man some does remind me quite a bit musically of a black album as well yeah um I'm trying to think uh um quickly quickly I I can't think of everything here well this is it say about it honestly <laughs> It's another one of those songs that didn't particularly capture my attention, so I'm not really saying much. Fair dues. I mean, I enjoy it, but I will agree, it's not, um, it is a bit of a middling track. And I mean that quite literally, it is a song that belongs at the middle of the album, where people are just going to be sort of like, okay, we're already, we're already invested in this album, so let's see how this goes. Well, isn't the right kind of place, that's it. Um, next, Murder One. Why only one? I mean, most murderers go for more than one. I think they're more meaning in terms of degree. <laughs> one degree of murder? That just sounds like the same thing. I'm not sure whether you're being deliberately <laughs> <laughs> obstinate. You know me. <laughs> you know me. You know I am a pedantic bastard. Apparently it's dedicated to Lemmy. Well, the title makes sense, I guess. I don't know. You know, some of the lyrics in the song also sounding very murder hurdy. Hmm. Uh, Ace is wild, Ace is high, all the aces, aces till you die. So, yeah. Born to lose. <laughs> it's not surprising, really, that they're giving tributes to Lemmy. He was kind of an important person, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, white lines fading, the iron horse rolls on and on and on. Of course, I can't hear on and on without thinking to um, Rome of the Ancient Mariner. Yeah, I can hear that. Or Heaven and Hell. I usually go to Rome of the Ancient Mariner. It, my brain will go one of two ways. More often Heaven and Hell because I prefer that song, but it will occasionally go to Rome of the Ancient Mariner. Um... Uh, murder all, murder one, give me murder, second class to none. Hear your thunder, still feeding back. Still hear your thunder, the man in black. Born to lose, living to win. Uh, That's not one of those songs that has like a, quite like a choking feel to it. Yeah. And yeah, that's drive. I like that the song has a good drive. If one just bop my foot, or my head, or both. <laughs> um, now the opening riff really bugging me because I reckon it it sounds similar to something but I can't think what I mean it definitely feels like it would have been perfect on the Black Album this uh, song sounds kind of Black Album but also the kind of hint of the earlier stuff as well mm. I think the Black Album style kind of structure but more of the kind of say White Lightning or just as all kind of at all Thrashiness. I was actually going to say Injustice for All, so definitely on the same page there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 
this is a song that I feel is driven a bit by the drums. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, this is an important thing to note. Lars is really on point on this album. He didn't do any of the bullshit he pulled on Saint Anger with unhooking the snare drums band, which... Bonk, bonk, bonk. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like he got some lessons. <laughs> Maybe he just got told to stop doing stupid stuff. Yeah. Maybe he had sort of like a buzz collar or something. Anytime he tried doing something stupid, they were just sort of like, <laughs> no, Lars. No. Stop it. And that's actually what ended... He ended up drumming well because he was having a seizure every so often. <laughs> oh, God, that's a horrible image. Lars with a seizure is my new coin core band. <laughs> I can imagine Lars with a seizure being some sort of comedy core band or something like that. I've seen plenty of band names that have that kind of thing to them. I can't think of any off my head, but there's so many bands I've seen that I have never actually listened to, but I've just seen titles of them, I think. <laughs> well, if you consider that there's a band called Beatallica, which is a mashup band of Beatles songs and Metallica songs. And I don't mean mashup as in they play one song to the tune of another. I mean they take the entire structure and themes and everything and blend them together it is glorious um but yeah uh last song on the album spit out the bone now i know there are extra tracks before anyone in comments but we've only got the normal version which is that intro yeah I mean, when it started, I was sort of like, holy shit, this is fast! It certainly sounds like much earlier Metallica. Yeah. I, really like it. I, I mean, like it a lot. this is a thrash song. There's no two ways about it. I mean, lots of people... I am I know for a fact that people might say that Metallica haven't been a thrash band for years. Whatever. I don't really care. All that really matters to me is whether or not they release a good album. And this song falls into good thrash. People were just saying, oh, but but Metallica don't have thrash in them anymore. Then just, no, listen to this song. This is most definitely a thrash song. Mm. Well, oh, this is interesting. James Hetfield explained the song Spit Out the Bone is getting rid of the human flesh part. Machinery is so much more efficient. We want things quicker. We want the convenience of technology. But at what point is convenience leaning into dependency? We need it or else we don't know what to do. The flesh is weak. <laughs> yeah. Long live machine, the future supreme, man overthrown, spit out the bone. The flesh betrays the flesh, your man has had his time, we lay him down to rest, machine the new divine. <clears throat> so that actually explains sort of the driving force behind the musicianship. You know, it being so fast, the whole concept of we want things quicker. You can actually sort of intrinsically link the music and the lyrics. It's not often that you can actually argue that the lyrics and music must have been written together, and I feel this must have been one such example. It's a good example, and frankly, it does a good job of it. Mm. And I have to say, this is a good closer. It is, yeah. It's like, okay, I thought you were going to let you off lightly. No, have some intense shit. And it's the third longest song on the album but it doesn't feel long because of the driving force you know how fast it is the drumming is intense the guitar work is very forceful because of all of that it doesn't feel long it feels like a very quick song but it also has this build it's going to get more and more intense as it goes along which is nice yeah also lots of soloing which is cool yeah overall this song is what it you always think about how bands close albums and sometimes you find that bands don't seem to know how to end the album metallica were clearly concerned about getting the ending right here 
so I suppose in summary the album has a bit of a fluid experience it's sort of it's kind of like weak chapters versus strong chapters um, I would agree with one reviewer that well not quite agree because he says that this is the best song on the album I would say this is the second best album after Here Comes Revenge. Second best album? Second best song, I think. <laughs> it was, it was the song in itself is a whole album. <laughs> There's more variety in this song than there isn't in anger. <laughs> That's depressingly true. <laughs> but yeah, it's a damn good closer. Yeah. Because so usually I, I like albums that you know, clues on a more kind of melodic side of things or just going to calm me down a bit. But this is, this is Metallica. Ending on a... Uh, Intense punch to the face actually works pretty well for them. Yeah. Metallica don't end on calming, slow songs. They don't start on calming, slow songs. They sometimes middle with calming, slow songs. Sometimes to their detriment. Anyway. <laughs> I will admit, I did used to like Unforgiven too, but as I've gotten older, it's one of those, why did I like this song? It's... Not necessarily a bad song, it's just, eh, I just don't give a shit. No, it's, it's, one well, of the songs is there, and there's so many other things you could listen to that are better than it. No, no, that's what I mean. I really liked Unforgiven 2. It was like one of my favourite Metallica songs for a while. So it's sort of like, how did I have such a high opinion of Unforgiven 2? The fuck? Mm. Mm. But anyway, enough of bashing. This was a great album for me. Not quite enough of bashing. One, one more time. St. Anger was shit. Thank you, Metallica, for getting better again. We might at some point do a quick overview of Lulu, because neither of us have fully listened to that. But I've heard a couple of tracks, and that was a bit of a... That was a major concern, because, funnily enough, that also had the same producer. But for now, we can breathe a little easier that Metallica are returning to form. What the next album will be like, who can say? But hopefully this is the start of an incline for them. Hopefully. Anyway, that's that for the track by track review. Uh, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.